Hey guys, welcome back to Shop Life. The day has been started for quite a while now. We've been working hard for Lord knows how long we lost track. But anyways, we're starting the vlog now. It's about three o'clock. Uh, I just got this car in. Uh, oh. oh, someone's calling. So this guy dropped off this E39. He had the ABS module replaced. He took it to two other people to try to code it so that way it would work. But each one that he took it to, they didn't code it properly. They fried two modules. This is the third one that he put on. And I just, fin I just finally finished up coding it. I recalibrate the steering angle sensor and everything's good to go. So yeah. In it's under fun. 30 minutes. Yeah, it was like probably about <laughs> 20 minutes maybe. Man oh man. All right. This is not a new thing. I get so many customers that have went everywhere else and- Even BMW dealerships. We had, we had, okay, so we had this customer come in. Uh, he was here last week, I think. So he took his car to the dealership and to get uh, the cooling system and all that stuff replaced. Uh, originally he just had like a little noise that he was trying to get fixed, but then they quoted him for all kinds of stuff. So he spent $6,000 at the dealership. They replaced everything, except they didn't replace the upper, lower, upper or lower radiator hose. And on top of that, once they bled the cooling system, they didn't put the bleeder screw back. And apparently someone else went to go pick up his car. He, they drove it off the lot, the car immediately overheated because they didn't put the bleeder screw. How can you take your car to the dealership that made the car, where it's supposed to know the car inside and out, and they don't put the bleeder screw back? But anyways, enough rambling with that. But I, like I said, I do get a lot of people that take their cars other places, that charge ridiculous amounts, and then they find me, they bring it to me, I fix the issues that nobody else was able to solve. I'm not saying I could fix everything, but I usually what goes on is people think that they know everything, and they overlook some simple stuff, or they're just overcharging and don't do half the work. Anyway, let's go ahead and get this car out. We ain't got no parking. No parking at all. We've, we're even taking some of our neighbors parking um, over here too, so, yep. And in here, it is completely full. There's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cars in here. We could probably still fit one, um, but no. <laughs> right, what you doing? All right, so this truck, was having battery issues. Uh, so they replaced the battery, but before that they tried to jump start it. And after they replaced the battery, now the ABS and brake light are staying on. And I tried to scan it with my tech stream, couldn't get it to detect the ABS, so now I'm checking all the fuses. All right, so I went ahead and checked out the car, tried to scan everything. I can scan all the modules, cruise control, immobilizer, everything except for the ABS module. And usually, what really happened is, so the car's battery had completely died. They tried to charge it. Uh, I guessing, I'm guessing they tried to jump start it as well on the old battery and something caused something to go wrong and it actually fried the ABS module. I checked all the fuses, none of that is fixing it. I checked the wiring. So the car should still have warranty on it. It's only got like 45,000 miles. So he's gonna take it to the dealer and see what they can figure out. Uh, but that's all I can do, so I'm about to put it back. Oh, and by the way, this is one of my neighbor's trucks, actually. All right, so now I'm about to start pulling these headers off of this car. Since the catalytic converters are clogged, uh, there's like severe power reduction on here since those cats are clogged. And I was able to check it by pulling these O2 sensors out and taking it for a spin. Some of the power came back. I actually just made a video on this to let other people know if they're having some similar issues because this car wasn't throwing any check engine lights or anything like that. But yeah, so i start off by taking off the secondary air pump and all that, then jack it up and start from the bottom. All right, so here's the progress on the header replacement. We've got both of the old headers out. Uh, I got the engine support bar in there so I can pull off that engine mount arm on the passenger side. Just makes it easier to pull off the headers. And then I got the new ones, well, they're used. Got those ready to go, uh, pushed out the studs because the studs were a little messed up, so I pushed them out on both. We're gonna replace this with stainless steel bolts. And then I brought in this M5 while uh, the headers are cooling down because I had to warm up the stud section. So, brought this M5 in, need to do filters, brakes, and an oil change. Let's get on it. All right, so I finished the M5, pulled this car in for a transmission fluid replacement as well as idler pulley. Already did the idler pulley, just got the fluid uh, drain and then I pulled the pan off. This transmission is on its way out. I think it's probably on its last leg. And I think this fluid change might make it worse. All right, so all transmission pans have magnets built into them or magnets put on them uh, to catch any metal particulates that are floating around in the fluid. 
So this is just to prevent from any debris going, like metal debris going in between the gears. So this transmission, when I pull the pan down, there's just metal everywhere. There's metal all on top of the valve body, and no surprise here, but there's metal all over the magnets. So you can see there is a lot of metal just dispersed all around. The fluid's filled with it, the magnets are filled with it. So yeah, this transmission is on its last leg. And the common myth is if you do a transmission fluid change at a high mileage, you're gonna make it worse. Uh, that's a myth because that only happens if there's already issues going on with the transmission. Or if you use the wrong type of fluid at, when you are doing the fluid change and that will cause havoc on the whole transmission. But when it looks like this, after we change the fluid, I can almost guarantee that it is going to get worse. So, I mean, there's no going back. You can't just put that old fluid back in and hope that it works out. It's not gonna work like that because there's gonna be some kind of contamination in there as well. So, hopefully, we'll just wish it the best of luck. Hopefully it doesn't get too bad, but we'll see what happens. Thing. Where does that metal come from? The gears in mm -hmm. the transmission. I mean, there's gonna be a little bit of metal whenever you drain the transmission fluid that should be stuck on the magnets. That's just from wear and tear. But this is like chunks. So this is not good. And he was experiencing some issues with shifting, especially when he's uphill or going uphill. So there we have our issue right there. That explains it all. All right, now it's clean, magnets are back on. Now time to put on the gasket. So obviously this process would be much easier on the lift, but the lift is occupied. And before I was at this shop, at my old shop, I didn't even have a lift. Everything I did, I did without a lift. So if there's any doubt in your mind that you can't do this without a lift, you're wrong. So, I mean, I get that excuse a lot. I mean, a lot of people tell me, hey, I don't have a lift, so I can't do this. Well, you gotta understand, I did, I've done swaps without lifts. I've done swaps in a freaking grass, which is, I would never recommend doing that. No matter what, you wanna always have solid ground. I mean, there's no excuses. And the tools that I have, as you guys probably already know, I don't have any expensive tools. I mean, I've got some specialty tools, but for most jobs, you rarely ever need a specialty tool. Whatever you need, all, almost all of my stuff is from Harbor Freight. And there's a Harbor Freight everywhere. And they're, for under a thousand bucks, you can have pretty much every tool, hand tool that I have. So don't let not having a lift stop you from working on cars. Anyways, let's get back to work. I mean, it will be easier, but you know, <laughs> the right lift's occupied. <laughs> All right, so I finished everything up, uh, reset the adaptation values, and then I just drove it around. Surprisingly, it actually feels a lot better, a lot smoother, uh, but we'll see if this is gonna be the test of time. I'm gonna let, tell him to let me know if he notices any other clunking. If he doesn't get worse in the next couple of weeks, uh, I'm just gonna recommend uh, for him to get another filter and fluid change, and that way we can double check, see how much more metal is coming out. And if there's not much more metal, then I mean, it might be okay, but we'll just see if it's gonna be the test of time. We can't really tell. All right, what's next? Clean. Yep, clean all this. <laughs> oh man. I still gotta work on that. Clean this up, then I'll start putting the headers back on there. And yeah. All right, so that's the end of the vlog. We finished up the other car. Uh, I'm just gonna take a quick nap, and then I'm gonna get back to work on that one. 
finish up the headers. I need to get some bolts for it since I did beat out the little studs. So I'm gonna go get some stainless steel bolts and then we'll put everything back together. And I'll see you guys in the next vlog.